If you've ever tried to grow a giant long gourd or a giant bushel gourd, you'll know that the seeds are a lot harder to germinate than the giant pumpkins. My theory behind this is that the seeds are so thick that the root can't even get out of the tip. And if you actually compare the tips of the bushel gourd seed compared to a giant pumpkin seed, you'll notice that in the bushel gourd, a lot of times there's not even really an opening. You can see where the root is supposed to come out, but in the pumpkin, you can actually see a hole, which theoretically you would think means it's easier for the root to come out. So I am doing an experiment to see if different preparation methods for these seeds makes a difference in germination. The way I designed this experiment is that I have six different ways of preparing the actual seed, and then I have three methods of germinating them. The six different seed preparations include one, having just a control where I do absolutely nothing, Two, the standard, which is lightly sanding the edges with a file, but not sanding the tip. The third method is the same thing, lightly sanding the edges, but also lightly sanding the tip. Usually they don't recommend sanding the tip because they don't want you to damage the root, but the point of me lightly sanding the tip is to actually make it so that there's a little bit of an easier opening for the root to pop out of. Fourth on the list is a more aggressive sanding, and I actually use my clippers to clip the edges and clip the horns of the seed. The purpose of this is to make it easier for the plant to pop itself out of the actual seed coat itself. Next is number five. Again, we're aggressively sanding and using clippers on the seed, but I'm also doing an aggressive sanding and clipping of the tip of the seed, again with the idea to make it so that there's a little bit more of an opening for the root to come out of. And lastly, number six is removing the entire seed coat completely. The purpose of doing this is to avoid any interference that that thick seed coat would provide. I have three other scenarios that those six groups will go through. One of the groups will go through the paper towel method of germination. The second group will go directly into the soil, and the third group will go in the freezer for a month to stimulate the cold stratification process that some seeds require for germination. Technically, bushel gourds don't require this, but this is an experiment, so we'll see what happens. Here you can see what it looks like when I lightly sand the seed. I do clip the horns of the seed, which is pretty standard even when you're doing a light sanding. So I clip the horns, and then I do a light sanding with a file. When I include the seed tip, I do get a little bit aggressive, but I don't get to the point where I can cause damage of the meat of the seed inside of that shell. When I do an aggressive clipping, you can see that the seed coat is almost completely open on the edges. I do this intentionally so that it's easy for the seed to pop out of that hard shell. In one group, I do like to keep the tip intact, but you can see that when I do an aggressive clipping of the tip, I still try to be mindful of the meat of the seed because I do not want to upset the meat of the seed where that new root is going to develop. All of my seeds went into a germination chamber. This is a homemade germination chamber that I made out of a Tupperware tote. On the bottom, there are two incandescent light bulbs. Those are not for light, those are to provide heat and then the seedlings go on top of that. I try to keep it at a constant 80 to 90 degrees. In general, it's relatively constant between all the seedlings, but the seedlings that are over the lights might be a little hotter than the ones that aren't directly over the lights. So it's not perfectly consistent, but for my home laboratory, it's good enough. All of the soil was mixed before it went into the cups, so they are all the same moisture level and I put saran wrap over the cups so that they wouldn't lose too much moisture. Here you can see my thermometer. I've been keeping the germination chamber around 90 degrees. The gourds do like it a little bit higher than the pumpkins do. Usually the pumpkins I keep in the low 80s to mid 80s. The gourds I keep more between 85 to 90, maybe even the low 90s. If you look close, you can see I had my first seedling sprout right over here, and that sprouted on day five. So we have our first successful seed germination, and we'll check to see which one it was. 
Okay, so the seedling that sprouted was the one that I didn't freeze and did a very aggressive clipping uh, around the seed as well as the tip. So pretty aggressive. And there you can see it. I'm gonna pull that out because we're just doing germination testing. We're not actually growing things. So I'll take note of that and then see what else gets growing. I'll probably open up my paper towels today to see if any of those have sprouted. Well, I totally screwed up the baggies. I <laughs> let them dry out. I'll be honest, I don't ever use this method for germinating. Uh, I think I need to work on my technique before I actually do an experiment with it. Uh, but yeah, these paper towels have all dried up. I'll try re-wetting them, but it's probably too late. So we may have to nix this part of the experiment, but we'll see what we can salvage. I noticed some green moldy looking stuff on this and this is the one where I removed the entire seed coat and just had the meat of the seed and digging down I've had at least two already that just got moldy so uh, that's not too good. As you know I completely screwed up the paper towel method so we got zero survivors all the way down. That is totally my fault. I do not do the paper towel method very often, so that's more likely a user error than anything else. So now we have comparison between the freezing group and the soil group for all of these different categories. Every category had four seeds in it. Not the highest amount, but at least there's a little bit to compare to. When you look at our control group, I had one out of four seeds germinate in regular soil, and none germinate when they were frozen beforehand. When I lightly sanded the edges, three out of four germinated in the soil, and two out of four germinated when I froze them first. When I included a light sanding of the tip, I did not have any germinate in the soil group, and I had one out of four germinate in the freezing group. When I did an aggressive clipping of the seed, but did not aggressively clip the tip, I did not have any luck with either the soil group or the freezing group. When I added the tip onto the aggressive clipping, I got one out of four in the soil group and none in the freezing group. And when I removed the entire seed coat, I got zero success with either of them. So overall, these were not the results that I was expecting. I thought for sure that giving the tip a little bit more of an opening would make a big difference in the germination rate. It looks here as if the more I mutilated the seed, the worse it did. And it looks like the tied and true method of lightly sanding the edges without touching the tip seems to be the highest success rate. So at this point, I'm going to continue trying to practice good germination techniques and just do the tried and true method of lightly sanding the edges.